Hello, hello. Video games have always been a pretty big part of my life, from childhood to teenagehood to even now. I don't really talk about it much on this channel, but I've always really considered myself a gamer. My first gaming console was a Super Nintendo Entertainment System when I was five. My first game was Super Mario World. I remember it was like this game that was so hard for me as a kid because I couldn't hold the B button and the A button and the Y button at the same time, so I couldn't run and jump and it was difficult. My mom had helped me, but I've come a long way since then. Mostly. So enough backstory, I really want to talk about my top 10 favorite games I've ever played of all time. And as any gamer would know, this is incredibly difficult to do. It is so hard to put 10 games in a list because there's so many more that deserve to be in the list. And so before I get into my top 10, I'm gonna go through some honorable mentions real quick. Okay, let's just try and speed through this as quick as I can to get to the actual beef. Could be beef. Honorable mention number one, Halo Combat Evolved and the whole Halo trilogy. Basically, I had grown up only playing Nintendo games and I thought only Nintendo games could be good. And then I played Halo and was like, wow, this has such a good storyline and everything about it is amazing. I actually have never owned an Xbox and therefore I've never played Halo on an Xbox, but what I used to play it on was my dad's Mac and I'd play hours and hours a day trying to beat it on Legendary, which I did succeed at, and play online, which of course we all know, Halo has some legendary online. My second honorable mention I just had to talk about because it's a game that I've probably spent more time playing than any other game in my life, and that is RuneScape. The amount of RuneScape references I make and know that no one else gets is annoying, quite frankly. It's just, it was such a big part of my life. I used to literally walk two miles every day to get to the library to play RuneScape on a computer and then come back home. That's how much I loved this game. It was... It's iconic, really. The amount of exploration, the fact that the map was so big and it just felt like I could go anywhere. It's such a good classic game, and it's a shame that it's not really what it used to be, but it was a big part of my life growing up, especially teenage years. Now, I'll mention the Portal series, Portal and Portal 2. I mean, I've got the shirt here, the little companion cube. Portal 2 is by far the funniest game I've ever played. Up there with Psychonauts, but Portal 2 is just... Such good mechanics, such a good storyline, so funny, uh, so fun. Even the multiplayer is amazing. Uh, it's just, it's great. If you have a computer, I mean, you can get it on Steam for like, what, five pounds or something? Go pick it up. Come on. Now, sadly, Ow. even though none of the Pokemon games made it into my top 10, they are phenomenal games. I spent a lot of my life playing Pokemon, my favorites being Gold and Crystal. Those were just like the best ones and when it was most popular for me as a kid. So, Pokemon, you get my honorable mention. I love the oh, Pokemon. Both Perfect Dark 64 and GoldenEye 64 belong on my list somewhere. They're in my honorable mentions because they were like the first first person shooters that I'd ever played played and they made multiplayer so fun. They were so interesting and the storylines were good, especially for Predator 64. It's like a better version of GoldenEye in my opinion. Might be an unpopular one, but hey, I'm just gonna put that out there. But yeah, they got me into the type of person that likes to play shooters. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, I just feel like is, is a meme in itself. It was a meme back in the day. Maybe it wasn't the best game out there, but it was really fun and the, the music was pretty cool. And I, it was one of those games I was a completionist with, got like all 120 S grades and everything. I spent hours in the Chow Garden. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. It's a good game. Anyone out there like Advance Wars? Advance Wars Dual Strike? DS games? Game Boy Advance games? They were really good. I love turn-based strategy. It felt like 4D chess, you could say. Oh my gosh. Spent many, many hours playing that multiplayer, playing the storyline. It was really good. And of course, lastly, my honorable mentions, the Civilization series. Most specifically, Civilization 4. The theme song by Christopher Tin, Bobby Yetu. Whew! Gives me the tingles. I love turn-based strategy, and Civilization 4 I've sunk so many hours into. I started with 2, then went to 3, 4, 5, 6. It's a good series, and if you want to waste your life away, Go for it. Alright, so now my honorable mentions are out of the way, I can find a way to sleep at night since I've mentioned everything that I want to mention. It's time to go into my top 10 list. Number 10 on the list, a Nintendo 64 game I've beaten well over 50 times, and I think 50 is probably an understatement here. That's not even a joke. Star Fox 64. Oh man, I've got like every freaking line of dialogue of that game memorized. I quote it all the time. The only person else I know that is like this is Kick the PJ. Every once in a while he like kind of just leave one of those Star Fox 64 tweets out. And I'm like, I get that reference. I get that reference. I've beaten this game so many freaking times. I've beaten it on hard mode, expert mode, everything. And I just got medals and everything. It is, it is an amazing game. And it is the reason I've realized as to why I play games with an inverted Y axis. Because I played Star Fox so much growing up, Star Fox 64 and Star Fox Assault for the GameCube, that I'm just used to flying. I'm used to flying games. So now I push up, I wanna look down, okay? I'm used to the R-Wing. Number nine on the list was very difficult and I kept going back in between the sequel and the original, but I had to choose it. Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. Now Paper Mario 64 is an amazing game. I love the storyline. It's so new and fresh, but Thousand Year Door took that formula and made it perfect on the GameCube. Oh my gosh, it was such a long game with such good gameplay and the storyline was so good and it was just beautiful art, right? The fact that this video game was, like Nintendo didn't choose what everyone else was making. They went, let's just make Mario into paper and then have fun with it. And that's what the game is. Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door, oh gosh. Also the music in that game, it's great. 
It's great. Also, you might see a recurring pattern in this list, but I really do love turn-based strategy games. They are my favorite type of game, so Paper Mario being on this list definitely makes sense. I seem to really have an issue with this list in choosing an original game or its sequels, because usually game developers are so good at perfecting their craft when they get to the sequels, and this one's no different, but the original just clenches it by a little bit more, and that is Bioshock. Bioshock just changed the world for me, really. This was one of those games that I played that, yet again, was when I was transitioning from only Nintendo can make good games to, whoa, this game is terrifying. I have screamed playing this game. I've played it with significant others. This is a game that's just really beautiful uh, as a concept. The world is amazing. It's so grungy and different, and the storyline is so, so, so good. Story is like one of the most important things when it comes to a game for me. Like, I'd say the most important second being, I guess, music, but oh my god, storyline. The twist got me so bad, it's so good. Bioshock Infinite, it's so close to it, it's such a good game, but I just think Bioshock, the original, gets that much more respect. I mean, the only thing I could say is possibly wrong with the original Bioshock is the last boss battle. It was a bit too easy for me. I was expecting something as hard as a big daddy and I kind of got a little daddy, which is, you know, what you call your significant other. So. <laughs> what? Number seven, I could not leave this out of the list. It could not be in the honorable mentions because this is a perfect game. It is as perfect as perfect can get. It is The Last of Us. It, oh my gosh. It is the reason to buy a PS3 or PS4 if you've not played this game yet. You should just go out and buy it. It is worth the price. That is how good this game is. The storyline is one of the best storylines, one of the best written games. The character, oh my, everything about this game is perfect. Gameplay, character design, uh, the soundtrack, everything. I love it. And I'm just talking about the single player. The multiplayer is amazing. I've put so many hours, days, weeks, months into this game, and that's not even a joke. I've played like over 2,100 games on the multiplayer, but the single player alone, oh my gosh, there's moments where I was I was freaking out, I was screaming, I was crying at one point, and the end of the story like has this, such a good gripping end moral question, and ah, The Last of Us, it's, it's so good. Am I excited for The Last of Us 2? Words cannot explain. Oh my gosh, yes. Number six on my list was one of those games that just blew me away because of how subtle everything was about the game, and that is Metroid Prime for the GameCube. Metroid Prime was a game that I bought and didn't really know much about, but what the game does is it doesn't explain it to you ever. It just kind of drops you in and you explore and you scan things and you learn about your surroundings, and the game development never goes, do this to do that, you know, hit this button. It just kind of goes, boom, explore, have fun, and it doesn't tell you how to do anything, you have to scan the bosses to figure out how to beat them, and it just felt like I was exploring this world, finding out what had happened to it, and I was just kind of like an explorer. I love that feeling in a game, and this was one of the best games for that. It was also a game that had like the best graphics I'd ever seen on a GameCube, like when it first came out, and I believe it was an opening title for the system, so it, it blew me away, really. Metroid Prime, the soundtrack, the gameplay, the storyline, I was obsessed. I had like Samus-themed like icons on Nintendo forums and everything. I was. I was a big fan. The sequel was good. It was kind of like the same game, but a bit more. So I liked it, but obviously it wasn't as good as the original. And then Corruption, the third one, eh, I didn't really like it as much. It's, it was still a good game. Oh, we're getting to the top five here. This is where it gets spicy. And the thing about my top five is they haven't really changed that much in the last decade or so. Like I've always had the same top three for the most part, but the one that did somehow squeeze itself into the list is number five, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Oh, it is. It is such a beautiful game. I don't know how to describe it. It's, I know it's a new game, and so a lot of people, hopefully you've played Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, but it is one of the few games that genuinely gave me such a feeling of wonder and like this want of exploration where it's just such a huge map. I can go here, I can go there, and on my way there, I see something else I wanna do, and it doesn't tell you how to do things, and you gotta discover for yourself. There's so many different ways to do things. It's so fun. It just makes you feel constantly like this eureka moment that you're smart and that you're doing things. You're solving puzzles every single moment of the game, and it's got such a beautiful story. It's so fun, and the artistic design, ugh. Oh. It's a game that I am so excited to play again. I told myself I'd wait at least a year and a half before playing the DLC, so that way it's more fresh in my mind. Oh man, can't wait for that. Also, I'm gonna be honest, I think Breath of the Wild is the best Zelda game. Second to me would be Ocarina of Time. That is just a really good game, but Breath of the Wild is just next level. We're using the same pun, okay? It's just that good. And now we're bringing it back old school to the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. The SNES number four, Donkey Kong Country, to Diddy's Conquest. That one is by far the best. I love Donkey Country 1, it was amazing, it's a wonderful game. 3, it was good, but yet 2 
was perfection. Platforming at its best, multiplayer at its best, kind of really if you like multiplayer where you just tell your brother that he's playing because you have the controller plugged in, but it's not really doing anything. You can tag team, that's not really the main point. The soundtrack of the game is one of the best soundtracks for video games that I've ever played. You know how much I love the Dungeon Hunter 2 soundtrack? I love it so much. Not only did I used to listen to it all the time on my iPod, it is still there, but I also have an entire album of remixes of this album from Overclocked Remix where they have different genres of it with vocals. They have different, like, uh, uh, it's, it's amazing. I listen to it honestly frequently and Donkey Kong Country 2 is still one of the best games I've ever played. I haven't even gone to the gameplay, but it, it's really good. It's got a good story. If you're into platformers, it's, it's one to play. Number three, it might help you understand my love for Yoshi. From this exact sprite comes Yoshi's Island, Super Mario World 2. It is, ah, uh, I love that Nintendo has the chance to do what everyone else is doing, and they go, no, you know what? Why don't we make the art design, crayon drawn graphics, like a little childhood story, and make it beautiful. It is a piece of art. Now the only gripe that you might have with this game is actually the sound of Baby Mario crying. Baby Mario on Yoshi's back whenever you get hit starts crying very loudly and that is when when I was playing the game as a kid my mom would be like turn it off and I'd be like no. So I had an extra incentive not to get hit by the enemies because my mom would make me turn the game off. I had to be as good as possible but Yoshi's Island has oh, just such a good soundtrack, such fun gameplay, such beautiful art design and I've beaten the game many 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 times. I'd probably stream that on Twitch later because I love that game so much and it's just something I would love to share with anyone. Yoshi's Island and uh, it gets gets my third on my list. Number two. Now after the N64 and the GameCube came out, I never thought I'd really go back to play games that I'd missed on the Super Nintendo, but I'd heard too many things about this game, and so I decided, why not pick it up? So I bought a cartridge of it for 100 pounds on eBay, popped it into the SNES, and then a year later they came out with a DS port, but it was worth it to buy both copies. Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger is... I keep saying work of art for a lot of these because they are. I don't like people that don't like video games because they think they're a waste of time. This is the same thing as, you know, reading a book or watching a movie or going to an art museum sometimes. Chrono Trigger has one of the best stories out of any game I've ever played, albeit maybe the best compared to the first one, but the storyline of Chrono Trigger is inventive, it's new, it's fresh. I, I bawled my eyes out during different parts of it. Uh, the gameplay is amazing, it's turn-based strategy. It's similar to Final Fantasy, but better so, and you really get your heart behind these characters. It's so long, the story just keeps going, and it's so new and fresh and something I'd never experienced before. And, oh my gosh, I love the soundtrack so, so, so very much. I had it as my text tone for at one point, like different bits of different songs, and I have like the orchestrated versions on my iPod so I can listen to the different versions of the soundtrack, and it is such a good game. It's a game I've played three times and I wouldn't mind playing it again because I will always have time to experience Chrono Trigger. Or Chrono Trigger if you want to pronounce it wrong. Whatever, it's fine with that. It, it is a wonderful game. Please play Chrono Trigger. And lastly, the creme de la creme. Number one on my list. You've heard all the other ones and you're thinking, what could possibly be number one? Of course, it's the one, the only. Fortnite, everybody, gonna get the wins. Fortnite Battle Royale. Just kidding, it's not Fortnite. I've been playing that a lot recently, but that's not the book one. Number one is Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars. This was a game I grew up with. It was a game that came out on the SNES that looked like it could be on the N64 with those 3D graphics and the story was something unlike anything Mario had ever done before because it was by a new developer, Square. You might recognize them from Square Enix. Uh, it was turn-based strategy again. As you can tell, I love turn-based strategy. It was a game that was so difficult for me and so explorative. I remember there were different parts during my childhood where I just could not figure out how to beat things and I just couldn't and I stopped and I'd have to come back like a couple months later and try it again and I'd figure it out and it just kept going and going and going and then finally I get to the end and it's such a good game. It's one of those really rare games that you just experience something, you know, and for me, maybe I'm a bit biased because this is such a big game from my childhood, but oh man, also the soundtrack is one of the best soundtracks. Soundtracks to me, like I said, are one of the most important things for games for me and every game in my top five has Phenomenal soundtracks, kinda 10 out of 10. Throughout my teen years, I'd listen to the soundtrack from Super Mario RPG all the time from the composer Yoko Shimomura, who you might recognize from Kingdom Hearts. She made the music for that as well, but it is such a good game. I love it so much. And those are my top 10 games. Tell me below if we have any matches, maybe. Maybe we have some similar top 10 games. I never played any Sims growing up as a kid. There's a fun fact or any Animal Crossings. Just missed out on all those. No Parappa the Rappas either. But I think my list is pretty good in terms of the way that most people enjoy these games. I know Video Game Donkey, someone I really love who makes YouTube videos. He and I have very similar tastes. So anytime he makes a reference, I'm like, I get that, man. And I love you. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed my video on my list. Speaking of video games, you might have noticed 
noticed there is now a giant TV behind me. Why, you might ask? Well, I'm now streaming on Twitch, like five days a week. I'm playing Fortnite, okay? I'm playing Fortnite and whatever game I might fancy. I'm gonna be trying to get a capture card so I can do some SNES games, some N64 games, some games that I love in this list. I'll be streaming them soon as well. But if you wanna catch up with me playing Fortnite, be sure to subscribe to my Twitch. The link is below. Also, as a note, I just found this out literally recently. Don't know why it's literally, but it was literally recently. If you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you pay for Amazon Prime, you get a free Twitch subscription every month. So if you do have an Amazon Prime account and you'd like to help me out, please go to the link in the description. You can sign up for a Twitch account and immediately subscribe to my channel. Amazon will pay me. In return, you pay nothing and you get special status in my Twitch streams. It'll be a fun time. We have nice little chats. It's a chill chat place down there. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hope you help and I hope you have a great, great day. I'll see you next Sunday. Goodbye.